You remember, I told you that letter of credit and confounder of credit have two principles guiding the operation. The principle of independence or autonomy and the principle of strict compliance. Good day, my name is Daily Ayinipo. I'm your expert doctor. Thank you very much for stopping by. In today's video, I'll continue the thoughts and the conversation we started some time ago on mitigating risk in export business. We've talked about mitigating risk in export business using letter of credit. We've talked about mitigating risk in export business using confirmed letter of credit. We talked about mitigating risk in export business using standby letter of credit. Today, I will talk about mitigating risk in export business using demand guarantee. One of the major concerns of everyone coming into export business is the risk involved. And the major risk is the fact that what if I do the shipment and I do not get paid? How do I mitigate the risk of not getting paid? That's exactly what we're trying to solve in this conversation. How do you mitigate the risk of not getting paid? What if eventually you do the shipment and you are not able to get payment? We've talked about how to use letter of credit, how to use standby letter of credit, how to use confirm letter, confirm letter of credit. Today, I'm looking at demand guarantee. Demand guarantee and standby letter of credit are functionally similar but structurally different. They are functionally similar in the sense that both of them can be used to protect against the risk of non-payment and many other risks, actually, both in trade and non-trade transactions. But they are structurally different because the rule that guide the usage of guarantee, demand guarantee, is called uniform rule for demand guarantee. But the rule that guide the usage of standard of credit is called international standby practice uniform rule for demand guarantee international standby practice uniform rule for demand guarantee international standby practice and this is a major difference this therefore create a major difference between standby let me give an example if i present a document for payment in a standby letter of credit, I claim payment. The bank have seven banking, seven working days to pay me. If I present same document for payment under demand guarantee, the bank have just about five business days to pay me. You can see the difference in the two of them, seven and five. Guarantee cannot be confirmed, standby letter of credit can be confirmed. So you can have confirmed standby, but you cannot have confirmed standby and confirmed demand guarantee. <laughs> so um, now that means if I'm using an open account transaction or even a bill for financial transaction or a cash against document, I'm doing export transaction and I'm using a payment method in which I am not secured, in which no bank is giving me an undertaking to pay in which I am relying solely on the integrity and the words, on the integrity and the words of the buyer for payment. If that is the kind of transaction that I'm doing, if that is the kind of transaction that I'm doing, then I will need a guarantee to protect myself. So if the buyer is willing to give you an undertaking and he doesn't want to give a standby, he can give a demand guarantee. And the kind of demand guarantee you should be asking for is called payment guarantee. If it was a standby to be a commercial standby letter of credit. But in this case, it's a payment guarantee to protect you against the risk of not getting paid. Do you remember? I told you that letter of credit and confirm letter of credit have two principles guiding the operation. The principle of independence or autonomy and the principle of strict compliance. 
If you also remember when I was talking about stability of credit, I added one more principle in addition to autonomy and strict compliance, and that's the principle of no proof of default. You see these three principles? They are also applicable in demand guarantee. Remember, demand guarantee and standby letter of credit are functionally similar. They are structurally different. What that also means is that they are not the primary instrument for payment. They are not the instrument for payment directly. They are not primarily to be relied upon for payment. They are to be activated when there is a default. That means it is only in default situation. It is only in event of failure of the buyer to pay a certain deal that you will call on a standby. Sorry, on a demand guarantee. It is only in the event of a default. So if you are an exporter and a buyer is offering you a payment method that involves shipment of the goods, sending document afterwards, and waiting for payment to come afterward. That is often called open account or cash against document. That leaves you exposed to the risk of not getting paid. But the beauty is that you can now protect yourself against the risk of not getting paid by asking the buyer that, okay, if your concern is that you don't want a letter of credit because of the issue of discrepancy, so why don't you do a demand guarantee? If, if you don't want standby, if it's from the US, North America, it might want a standby. If it's from Europe, it might want a demand guarantee. If it's from Asia, it might be okay with either of them. But the, and, and I've said in the last video that if the buyer say, okay, I, I want to give you, but I don't want to bear the cost. What of the cost? It's better you share in that cost. And say, okay, 1%, 2%. Charge it to me. Let's adjust my pricing. So you give me the instrument from your bank, and I will be okay with you give um, paying the fee that you incur for me to just to be protected. The idea is this. You don't need to do a shipment without ensuring that you are sure of the payment. If you are not sure of the payment, it's better you have a representative at destination, and we'll talk about the issue of representative in the future. But let me say something here. Let me say something here. When you are dealing with this kind of transaction in which you are using a guarantee, it's also important you understand that there could be a discrepancy. The only difference is that the buyer will have cleared the goods. Remember one of the challenge of letter of credit is discrepancy. The risk that I will have a letter of credit but I will not be paid because of the issue of inconsistency in document. But in this kind of arrangement, be it standby letter of credit or demand guarantee, the importer will already have document. He will have been able to clear the goods. Even if there is a discrepancy, that can be sorted out. And that will not affect the concern he has, which is the issue of demurrage. So next time when you want to do an export transaction and you are asked, about the instrument, uh, and you are asked to do open account, and you don't have a means of mitigating the risk of non payment, then ask for a demand guarantee. And if the buyer says he can't give you a demand guarantee, mm, maybe that's the reason why you should not go ahead. Unless you have a representative at destination, maybe that's the reason why you should not go ahead unless you have a representative at destination. Maybe that's a reason why you should not go ahead unless you have other means of mitigating that risk. There's so many people that have lost money going into export, reason being that they find themselves going into export without understanding the options available for them to mitigate their risk. If you want to learn more about demand guarantee and stability of credit. I've written two books. One on demand guarantee is called Demand Guarantee Made Easy. The other one is called Standard of Credit Made Easy. If you check seller.co, seller, S-E-L-A-R dot C-O, seller dot C-O, you will be able to get it. You can also drop your comment in the comment section, making inquiry about 
How do I get a copy? The soft copy are available online. How do I get a copy of the demand guarantee or stamina of credit? So you can have a good understanding because if you buy the book and you read about the guarantee and the demand guarantee stamina of credit, the two of them are protecting you. They are independent undertaking that are called upon when there is a default. So they are all, they, they will be paid as long as the uh, the party who is beneficiary demand for payment and present requisite document, the bank does not need to prove that there is a default. I believe this video will have been of immense benefit to you if you have been thinking of how do I mitigate the risk of non-payment, particularly when my buyer is saying he doesn't want to give an LLC because of delay and discrepancy. Now you know there's an instrument called demand guarantee. Now you know there's an instrument called standby letter of credit. In the next video, I'm going to be telling you about I'll be combining demand guarantee and standby letter of credit, and I'll be showing you how you can use them to mitigate risk of a country that have risk. That means when you're not comfortable with the risk of the country where the buyer's bank or the, uh, the economic risk or political of the buyer's bank reside. If you're not okay with it, and you still want to use guarantee and standby, I'll be talking about another variant of these two instruments in the next video where you will be able to see mitigate the risk in that country and be able to get paid in spite of the risk of that country. Has this video been of help to you? Give it a thumbs up. Do you have a friend that needs to hear about this? Share with a friend. Do you, are you new to this channel? Subscribe. Do you want to know when we upload the next video? Click on the notification bell. More importantly, more importantly, drop your comment in the comment section. Let's know how this video has been of help to you. And if you have questions, feel free to drop it in the comment section. My name is Mindla Yemibo, and I'm your expert doctor, and I'm signing out. Thank you very much. See you in the next video, and bye for now.